Welcome back to Crux Stationalis. Today we go back to the Roman Station Church for the first Sunday of Lent. The Archbasilica of St. John Lateran, also called the Cathedral of the Most Holy Savior and of Saints John the Baptist and John the Evangelist in the Lateran. San Giovanni in Laterano is the Cathedral Church of the Diocese of Rome and serves as the seat of the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. Many confuse this, but St. Peter's Basilica is not the most important church in the Catholic world. As the Cathedral of the Pope, as Bishop of Rome, St. John Lateran ranks superior to all other churches of the Roman Catholic Church, including St. Peter's Basilica. We can look to Roman history and the history of the Lateran to set our minds and our hearts towards the cross of Christ in this Lenten season. How fitting it is that the celebrating bishop carries the cross of Christ in procession this relic of the true cross, is carried in procession as the litany of the saints is sung. In these mini processions at the different Roman station churches, if a relic of the true cross is possessed by the place, then that would be carried in procession. If not, the prominent relic of the place is carried, most typically the relic of whose station we are at, whether it be St. Peter, St. Lawrence, or Sant Anastasia. I mention the cross of Christ because it was in that sign that Constantine conquered Rome. In hoc signo vinces. The bishop Eusebius of Caesarea, a historian, states that Constantine was marching with his army when he looked up to the sun and saw a cross of light above it, and with it the Greek words entutovica, in this conquer, a phrase often rendered into Latin as in hoc signo vinces, in this sign you will conquer. At first, Constantine did not know the meaning of the apparition, but on the following night, he had a dream in which Christ explained to him that he should use the sign of the cross against his enemies. And so, under the sign of the cross, Constantine the Great conquered Maxentius, at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge. He then entered Rome victoriously, processing down the Via Lata, the present-day Via del Corso, leading to the ancient forum towards the Colosseum. Marrying the sister of Maxentius, Emperor Constantine thus gained the land of the Lateran, and eventually this land was given to the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. The palace basilica was converted and extended, becoming the residence of Pope St. Sylvester I, eventually becoming the Cathedral of Rome, the seat of the popes as the Bishop of Rome. The ciborium over the high altar of St. John Lateran is derived from a design by Arnolfo di Cambio and decorated with paintings by Barna da Siena throughout the years of 1367 and 1368. The cage above contains silver reliquaries which are said to hold the heads of Saints Peter and Paul, the two prince, apostles, and martyrs of Rome. And so with them, and under the sign of the cross, we begin these days of Lent, as the gospel for the first Sunday of Lent takes us into the desert, so we begin this Lenten journey of fasting, of penance of almsgiving, and so fighting the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Thank you for joining me at the Roman Station Church of the first Sunday of Lent, St. John Lateran. I will see you tomorrow.